not fair, really, throwing special relativity at me so early in the afternoon. Ah, black coffee. Okay, special relativity. That's what you're talking about. It's not general relativity, which was Einstein's true genius. Somebody else would have come up with, or a collection of people might have come up with special relativity given a few more years. But Einstein got there first because of his courage and his imagination. At the turn of the century, everyone was very puzzled by the fact that no matter what the speed of an approaching object, the light coming from it was always measured at the same speed, 300,000 kilometers per second. A few people were heading in the right direction to get the answer, but Einstein got there first. If you look at any measurement of speed you like, there's always a distance component over a time component. Miles per hour, for instance. Einstein realized that the, the miles, the distant part, distance part wasn't changing but perhaps the time thing was so uh, he looked at this and, and by allowing himself to think that time wasn't fixed and constant the answer became clear to him and he was able to carry out a number of calculations and to give an exact value for the the rate of temporal change for an object moving at high velocity it's been proved a number of times, the the only two that I remember are the the uh, an experiment carried out when atomic clocks became available. They synchronized a pair of atomic clocks, flew one of the clocks around the Earth, brought it back to the other clock, looked at them side by side, and found that the one that had been moving at the higher velocity had fall it it, it had fallen behind the other clock. So the the to me, the essential thing of special relativity is that time passes more slowly relative to a stationary frame for someone moving at high velocity. To simplify that statement, if I fly out 25 light years into space at near to the speed of light, turn around and come back, you, Azrianok, will have aged 50 years and I'd be able to kick your ass because I would have only aged two or three years, allowing for the, the time it takes to safely accelerate to the speed of light, decelerate, turn around, accelerate again to come back. I, I, like I say, I think one year, two years, three years, four years, about four years plus a bit is what I would age. And obviously if I travel a hundred thousand light years across the galaxy and come back, then a quarter of a million years near as damn it has passed here and I can really really kick your ass if I can dig you up so fortune because of special relativity fortune favors the brave as regards relativistic space travel a number of other things happen because of E equals MC squared and because to accelerate anything you have to put energy into it the thing that's accelerating or the thing that's traveling at high velocity actually weighs more than its original rest mass. This explains why you can't actually reach the speed of light because as you approach the speed of light you become heavier and it takes more energy to accelerate that heavier object to the higher velocity. To actually reach the speed of light would require infinite energy because at that point you would attain infinite mass. This is why the speed of light is the universe's uh, speed limit. Nothing with any rest mass can reach the speed of light. Also there's a thing called the Lorentz contraction which uh, for all you ladies out there if you want to impress your boyfriend if you fly across their field of view at the speed of light you actually appear sorry, close to the speed of light you actually appear stick thin because of this thing called the Lorentz contraction. Um, unfortunately, to the mirror on board the ship, which is traveling at the same speed of you, as you, you don't notice any difference whatsoever. There's no, nothing would appear any different to you traveling 
at close to the speed of light it's only relative to somebody in a different inertial frame who isn't traveling as fast as you where the, the differences would be noticeable and even then those differences only really become noticeable to the human senses after about 85 percent of the speed of light has been attained but it is true that if if you just run if you just walk even if you crawl away from somebody time is passing slower for you relative to the person who stays behind the edge of a CD is younger than the center of the CD because it has to move at higher velocity as it as it spins so it experiences this time contraction a time dilation as it's called it's absolutely genuine um, it's been measured I, I think I've mentioned the atomic clock um, experiment there's also the decay of a particle called a muon a muon doesn't last very long um, once it's been created and they get created in the upper atmosphere by impact with gamma rays the muon according to classical physics shouldn't live long enough to get down to the surface but because it's traveling at nearly the speed of light due to this high speed impact in the upper atmosphere its decay rate is slowed so that it can last to get down to the surface where we can detect it and the the amount of time dilation experienced by the muon is exactly in accordance with special relativity as was the um, disconnected of disconnectedness of the, the two atomic clocks it was exactly as Einstein said it would be I think that's about it E equals mc squared you know that each tiny bit of matter has a lot of energy locked up in it a vast amount of energy locked up in it hence the reason that um, atomic bombs are such frightful things because they uh, they unleash a small amount of that energy that's locked up far more efficiently than any chemical explosive I think that's just about covered everything in these brain cells there is another uh, there's a number of other things which I won't go into the uh, the blue shifting of light that's that's quite a, a beautiful concept but I think as long as you remember that time slows down for an object traveling at high velocity and that th those effects become noticeable to us at around about 85 to 90 percent of the speed of light you're just about there and the other thing is it is not science fiction don't think it is don't think there's any mistake about it don't think that it's not been tested a number of times if we can go to the stars at near to the speed of light if that can ever be done then the, the payoff for the people who go traveling is is enormous um, as, I, as I mentioned earlier if something travels a thousand light years out into space at the speed of light to us it will take a thousand years to go there but to the people doing the traveling two or three years depending again how close they can get to the speed of light I think that's it in a nutshell there may be a number of follow-up questions but if they get too hard I'm going to hand them on to my two very very clever subscribers and they can make your brain hurt properly I think that's about it hope it was good enough <laughs>